Hey, this is Taya Valkyrie, and you're in the wrestling epicenter. What's up, everybody? It's the Swolverine, the FM Machine, Mr. GMSI, Brian Cage. Here you're checking out Interactive Wrestling Radio. What's up, everybody? It's the Swolverine, the FM Machine, Mr. GMSI, Brian Cage. Here you're checking out Interactive Wrestling Radio. Hey guys, been a little while since we brought you a new episode of Interactive Wrestling Radio after bringing you a big week a couple weeks ago with PCO, Brian Cage, and Sammy Callahan. Now we have Brian Cage, Taya Valkyrie, and Scott Demore on the Impact Wrestling Press Pass podcast, if they're calling it that this week. If not, it's the Access TV media conference call. Wanted to just get a thought out here. There's a jerk that's jumping in trying to say controversial stuff a couple times here. Man, whoever you are, you're a tool, and you should never, ever be allowed to be part of these things ever, ever again. What an embarrassment. Other than that, these are three people, uh, two men and a lady, who really represent a top-notch wrestling promotion in the best way possible. So how happy to have been a part of this Impact Wrestling Media conference call, and without any delay... Let's get to that media conference call. This is Cindy. I'm excited to get this going, so go ahead and raise your little hands. I see a few coming in already, and I just want to check. So we have Scott, Demore, Ty Valkyrie, and Brian Cage. Are you all here? Yes. Yep. Yes, sir. Fantastic. Um, All right, so go ahead and get started then. And for those of you calling in, we uh, will have a recording of this available later. Uh, So let's get started here with our first question. Uh, That's going to come from Bill Pritchard. Bill, are you there? Hi, Sean. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Go ahead with your question. All right. So I had a question for Scott first. Um, There's been a lot of talk this week about bringing back the TNA name for a one-night-only pay-per-view. And I just wanted to see if it was early enough where you can clarify what you're trying to do with that as far as if you're looking to bring former talent back or match types and if there was any, like, maybe pushback about calling it TNA. Yeah. Uh, thanks for the question. I mean, we are pretty early in the process. And, you know, with the... With an energetic crowd out there that certainly was showing the fact that they're longtime Impact Wrestling fans going back to our TNA roots, it seemed like the right time this past Saturday at the All Glory Fan Interaction event to put out a little teaser there about a one-night return to our former branding, which uh, I think we've always made clear that we don't, we don't run from our history. We embrace it, the, uh, the many-year you know, history of TNA Impact Wrestling, we'll call it, is, is a fantastic part of wrestling's rich fabric of history. And to go back and be able to honor that for, for one night in a weekend in which you see all types of stars from all generations of wrestling usually uh, basically converge on one city, we thought that it was, uh, it was a good place to do it with uh, you know, everything going on in April in, uh, in Orlando, Tampa area. So... We'll go there. We'll have fun. We'll certainly look to mix in some some stars of previous eras, and of course, continue to highlight the amazing roster that Impact Wrestling has currently. And as a quick follow up, given that you've been there since the early TNA days, is there any desire, or has there been any request for you to bring back Team Canada and maybe get you back on screen? <laughs> It's, it's, it's something that comes up, uh, especially from longtime uh, viewers and fans, and I'm certainly uh, so proud and, uh, and honored of the, what I was able to do as part of Team Canada, and it was, it was what it was supposed to be. It was a platform where I was one of the tools to launch the careers of amazing young talent, and if you look at what Bobby Roode and Eric Young and T.D. Williams went on to do, it certainly achieved at that goal. If uh, the time was right for a, a reunion or something, absolutely uh, would be would be open to it. But really, my focus is working behind the scenes and trying to promote and build uh, Impact Wrestling and continue to feature the greatest uh, talent roster I think out there in the sport right now. 
Thank you. Fantastic. Thanks, Bill. All right. Our next question here is going to come from Steve Jennings. Steve, are you there? Hi, I'm, I'm here. Fantastic. Go ahead with your question. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say thank you for taking my call. And my other question is, do uh, Tanya, do you guys, uh, how big is your, your, your penis? I mean, we've wondered for years, and I'm not sure uh, that we've ever seen it, felt it, smelt it. Um, guys, can you answer that? What do you think? Hello? I don't know. Hey, can you repeat your question so, for us? And or? There, make it serious, or what? It, no, how big is your rig? Oh, your ring? No, your rig. Your dong. Oh. Oh. Uh, sorry, right. we sorry, couldn't we quite get your question there. Uh, we're going to go ahead and grab another question here. Uh, Nick, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, fantastic. Go ahead. Hi, uh, thank you guys so much for taking the time today. Uh, my question, my first question is also going to be for uh, Scott here today. Uh, Scott, a uh, lot of buzz around the fact that uh, Kylie Ray appeared at Bound for Glory. Uh, I was just wondering uh, if you could give us an update on uh, what what Kylie's status is with Impact Wrestling um, going forward. We were happy and honored to have uh, Kylie Ray choose to be part of our Bound for Glory weekend to be a surprise entrance in the uh, Call Your Shot gauntlet. She is, Kylie is an amazing performer. She has a charisma that very few do. And I think that uh, the door is certainly open if Kylie chooses that she's interested in being part of Impact Wrestling. And I think she would excel in our amazing knockouts division because she's exactly what we like to feature, which is, which is talented, world-class uh, female athletes that have uh, amazing personas and connect with an audience. So that's my opinion on it. And I'd honestly like to hear what our knockouts champion would think of Kylie Ray joining the knockouts. I, I would as well. That was my follow-up. Thank you, Scott. Yes, Ty, what do you think about Kylie Ray and her possibly joining the knockouts division? Um, I've actually had the chance to wrestle her prior at an independent show. Um, I think she's extremely talented. I think that she would bring definitely something different to our knockouts division, and I am more than happy to humiliate her over and over again <laughs> and have her go after me for the knockouts title because I know that La Huera Loca ain't scared of no smiley Kylie. Damn. Uh, all right. Uh, and I guess lastly here, to uh, I'd like to ask something to you and Brian both. You know, there's been a lot of intergender wrestling uh, and impact wrestling as of late, including Tessa recently taking part in that crazy uh, X Division ladder match. Um, do you feel a need to have a men's and women's title? Do you think that maybe Impact should explore the idea of unifying those titles uh, to make them an intergender title? Um, I mean, it's such a complicated question because it can go in so many directions. I do feel that like everybody should be able to challenge each other for the titles. I feel like that is something... Uh, you know, something different that we could try doing. I mean, Brian, whenever you're ready, bro. <laughs> I mean, you did try it once, Ty, in a different promotion. It didn't work out too well for you. Wah, wah, wah. But, <laughs> but I, I, I do feel, I don't think there's, I think there should be all titles, just like, you know, I know it's a style that everyone does now, but like how the X Division was its own style. And there's the Cruiserweight and the Tag Team and the World and so on and so on. So it creates different stuff. Doesn't mean that, sure, that a woman can't challenge for the world title, but I, I don't think that they should eliminate any titles, no. Yeah. Cool. Thank you guys so much for the time. Really enjoyed Bound for Glory. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Nick. All right. We're going to go on to Joe Lanza. Joe, are you there? I am here. Thank you. It has to go ahead with your question. So this uh, first question is for Scott. With uh, moving to Axis, I know that they don't subscribe to, uh, to Nielsen ratings, but um, can you give us an idea of what type of viewership increase you guys are expecting with the move from Pursuit and or Twitch over to Axis? Well, I think one of the amazing things of moving Impact Wrestling over to Access TV is that it is a robust platform. I believe about 55 million homes it's available in. And it's a network, Access TV is, that wrestling fans, most importantly, are very familiar with. So I would think that coming out of the gate, we would be very competitive and uh, with the current products that we currently have on Access TV with New Japan and 
and women of wrestling, wow. So I think you're going to see some great growth. I'm certainly not the expert who's going to sit here and give a throw out numbers, but I know that the that New Japan has been very successful and WOW has been successful, and I think that we're certainly going to bring our own unique brand and our reach that we have from uh, one of the largest digital platforms and international platforms in all of the industry and having access TV now as a domestic base for that, I think certainly sets us up for substantial growth both immediately and over the long haul. Okay, thank you. And one quick follow-up on the uh, on the intergender topic. As you guys lean more heavily into that, have you received any sort of kickback from sponsors or even from wrestlers in the locker room that aren't comfortable doing that style? No, I mean, I, there's certainly some people who will certainly openly admit that it's not their cup of tea, but we've seen no sponsor – uh, blowback or anything with any of our partners because you know in the modern era here as we sit on the on the verge of being in 2020 uh the the idea of, of equally featuring male and female uh competitors and performers it seems almost ludicrous to me that, that it's still a topic for debate it should be something that's that's automatic but unfortunately since it isn't we're very proud to be at the forefront of putting that out there both with obviously tessa blanchard and also with all of our amazing knockouts and doing what we've done since day one, which is so that, you know, as Eddie Edwards likes to say, anything is possible, whether you're a male or a female. And now we're showing you that if you're a female, it doesn't mean that the Knockouts Championship is the only title you can aspire to. You can aspire to anything you want. And uh, there hasn't been, uh, I think, really almost any major negative. There's certainly always going to be the, the uh, haters out there that uh, you'll find on social media. But overall, it's been overwhelmingly positive both in our locker room in the industry and certainly from fans okay thank you very much great thank you all right our next question here is going to come from stephanie stephanie you there yeah i'm there fantastic go ahead with your question <laughs> hello everyone stephanie from stircha magazine united kingdom how are you good um i will start with a, um with a question for scott uh aside from kylie ray uh you joey ryan was in the call you shot gauntlet match and he signed with the company uh did you i'm gonna say that uh put any kind of restriction on on his character uh for him to come to impact well we saw him. he's an amazing performer and professional wrestler who is uh who has been out there for many years including having a previous run in in this company uh joey's character certainly can be a polarizing one at some at some times but as you saw sunday night at bound for glory he is a beloved uh, character and performer in professional wrestling. So kind of our thing is not trying to limit out, uh, performers when they come in, you know, to impact wrestling. We want to showcase them for who they are. And some people out there are going to love and embrace those characters and some are not. But one of the things we like to do, which is very different than other companies, is we don't want to fit everybody into one uniform type of, you know, role or look or style. We're going to go out there and let everybody be themselves. And you've been at the the arm for, uh, of impact for nearly two years. We've done. Um, you you have signed a lot of talents. You have tried uh, a lot of new wrestling styles. You, you you've done a lot of things. Uh, do you feel like with the AXS AXS? Sorry, my apologies. Uh, the AXS deal is like the is closing the chapter of rebuilding because this is something that we have never stopped uh we have never stopped uh saying do you feel like the, the rebuilding process now is over that's a great question i certainly believe that the rebuilding process to call it just that is over i think we're here i think we've spent two years of putting out an amazing wrestling product and I think with our move to Access TV, 
we're in a situation now where our domestic partner is very strong. Our international partners have always been very strong. Our digital department has been as good or better than just about anybody out there in the wrestling industry. And the rebuilding process is done. But the other process, which will forever be part of our goal, is the constant reinventing and growth that we'd like to see. So just because there we're, we're stable, just because we now have an amazing roster that we're happy with, what makes wrestling great and that it's truly greatest moments in history is when we're out there and evolving and changing and revolutionizing what we do, whether it's going out there and featuring strong female characters at a time when nobody else did, whether it's taking the undersized competitors of the X division and showcasing them out, out there on a large stage when nobody else would, or whether it's out there going intergender wrestling uh, in 2019, we will always look to grow both our company uh, but we'll also look to change the industry. And as long as we stay true to ourselves, we put out a strong product that we're proud of and that is eating and engaging fans, then we'll always look for ways to change and evolve because if you stay stagnant in this industry, then you are certainly going to see negative results. You have to go out there. You have to be pushing forward and looking for positive change, both within your company and in the industry in general. And that's something that we feel very strongly about and will continue to try to do. Great, Stephanie. Um, all right, our next question here uh, is going to come from Kristen Ashley. Kristen, are you there? I am here. Thank you. All right, go ahead. Uh, so my first question is for Scott Fimore. Um So I would say across the map, Impact's women's division is really seen as the women's division, really the best women's division. Um, now that you're moving to, to access, do you have any plans specifically for the women's division? Any new talents, new, ti uh, new talent, new titles that you're looking at? We're always out there looking to, to add new talent. Uh, because wrestling is something that succeeds, as I've discussed many times, with, with changeover. And it, it's, it's characters have to come in. They, they tell their story. We go on their saga. Then they move on somewhere else, and we bring in new and compelling characters. So we're always on the lookout for, for great talent. We saw some amazing talent, highly and otherwise, this past weekend at Bound for Glory weekend. So you're certainly going to continue to see new talent uh, emerge, both in the knockouts division and also – uh, with male competitors. And then as far as for your question specifically about titles, uh, certainly as we start to build a, a pretty robust knockouts division, at some point in time, we'll continue to examine if it's a, uh, if it's a situation where we look to add a knockouts tag team championship as we've had in the past, or is it simply as, as we approach 2020 and where we are on equal footing and with intergender wrestling, Will we see two of our amazing, powerful, and athletic females team up and chase after the current Impact World Tag Team Championships? Because remember, they're the Impact World Tag Team Championships. They're not the Impact World Men's Tag Team Championships. Tag team championships. That's, that's, that's really promising and awesome. Um, and sort of segues into a question for Taya. You know, you're the longest reigning knockouts champion. You've you've made your way uh, and beaten everybody in the division. What's next for you? Do you plan on pursuing the inner gender? Are there other talent that you would like to, to fight that hasn't been signed yet? Um, I think the possibility for different women coming into our division um, into next year is like really looking up. And I know that Scott and everybody behind the scenes is going to make sure we have the best women on our roster. As far as, who else I would like to challenge? I mean, I've had many an intergender match before. I've proven myself against men smaller, bigger, and equal to me. So I'm open to any opportunity. And just like I mentioned before, you know, title versus title, let's do this. I have no problem challenging any one of our champions at this point. That, that's amazing. I got chills. <laughs> all right. That's all I have. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Great. Thank you, Kristen. All right, our next question here is going to come from Joe Glazia. Joe, are you there? Yes, I'm here, guys. How are you? Great. Go ahead with your question. Great. I have a question for both Hello? camps, and I'm hoping to start with uh, Brian. How you doing, Brian? 
Good, good, good. How about yourself? I'm doing good, man. Thank you. I, I wanted to ask you just, uh, you know, you, you took this, uh, you had this um, bad bump Hello? back in Rebellion that caused uh, caused an injury. Um, and you were still Hello? able to, you know, power through and get through this match, which is, you know, very commendable. Uh, and then you did this um, bio cell, uh, stem cell therapy uh, in Hello? Colombia. H how well did that help you? Uh, and do you recommend it to uh, other wrestlers to use for rehab? Um, yeah, the, uh, the, the injury was, uh, was awful. It was one of the most painful moments of my career. I, I literally thought my, my career might be over as far as my leg going down my thigh, I broke my back, whatever, what have you. Obviously it's kept me off TV and being able to defend my title for quite some time. Um, I was doing everything under the sun to try to recover from that, including going to Columbia and getting the stem cells. And, uh, I do believe, uh, it did have a substantial benefit to it. Um, the guy that got me involved with that too is um, a huge fan of wrestling, and he's, that's why, if you haven't noticed, there's been a handful of wrestlers going down there lately. Um, and I definitely think that that's. Uh, I've already been like semi-educated and in into stem cells as well, and just the, the human nature and what the benefits are. And it's a shame you can't get the actual umbilical stem, uh, stem cells here in the states. Um, but uh, yes, I, I do think it it's tremendously um, helped me get past this and beneficial, and I will. More likely be doing it again in the future, just for uh, maintenance and for any other injury that may occur. Well, that's fantastic, and I'm happy to hear that you're doing better, Champ. Um, Ty, uh, time to follow up a little bit on uh, on Kristen's question. Um, yes, you are the uh, now longest reigning knockouts champion in the company history. Um, can you just, you know, kind of generic, but can you give us your thoughts of, about what it's like to be in the top spot in what many are calling the best women's division uh, in pro wrestling? I'm well obviously whenever you're at the top you have a huge target on your back and I'm completely aware of that not only coming from every woman and you know in our locker room but also from the fans you know I'm constantly being scrutinized and all this kind of all this kind of stuff because everyone you know no one everybody wants to be on top and not everybody can be but I thrive under pressure and I thrive when people tell me that I can't do something or or, you know, challenge me in that way. And so, you know, it just motivates me more when I have that target on my back to be that much better. And I think I've proven that over and over again throughout the entire year defending my title against every single woman on our roster. So, I mean, here we go into 2020, and I know that I will be still holding this knockout title. Oh, that's fantastic to hear. Uh, thank you guys so much for your time, and I look forward to uh, watching you both in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. All right, our next question is going to come from Duke. Duke, are you there? I am. Yeah, go ahead with your question. Uh, first question is for uh, Brian. Uh, Brian, a couple of months ago, Ken Shamrock was a guest on Duke Loves Wrestling podcast, and, and he was very specific about calling you out as a potential challenger. Are we going to see Brian Cage versus Ken Shamrock in the not-too-distant future? I mean, I know he came back, he had this match with Moose, and, and that's how the whole thing even started, was a little, you know, kind of playful banter back and forth between the two of us, the first ever champ, the current world champ. Um, and I, I, I keep on saying, I'm, I've always been a huge fan of Shamrock from from the get-go, and uh, and he actually is the one that, you know, from wrestling, maybe get in uh, to become a super fan of, of UFC and mixed martial arts. Um, I would I would love the opportunity to, uh, to work with, with Ken, um, I know he uh, came off on the uh, losing end at uh, Bound for Glory, and he's going to be here at the uh, next set of tapings. But I don't know what, um, like, what, what, what's next for him. If he's, if he's done, if he's doing more, if he's staying, if he's going, or, or exactly what's happening. Uh, I, I'll, I would still love the opportunity to uh, lace up with Ken just because I'm a fan, and I think it'd be fun and something you know we could do that we both enjoy. But uh, I guess that's up to him and where he's at in his career at this point in time. Great stuff. Great stuff. And just one more question uh, for Scott. You know, Scott, uh, Impact Wrestling has gone through so many different incarnations. And before this current crop of excellent talent and this current regime in the marketplace, the name hasn't always been so strong. Now that you're on Access TV, you're on this large platform and what have you, and, and all things are firing on all cylinders, what's the timeline expectation internally is ter in terms of bringing impact to a point where 
the the brand name itself is trusted once again for for the fans worldwide well i think that uh trust has certainly been something that we've spoke about many times over the past near two years uh because when myself and don Callis came in and joined at nordholm we knew one of the big things we needed to do was to rebuild trust uh, we know that previous regimes had lost trust both within this industry and with its fan base. So we've worked very hard, I think, over the last two years to show that when Impact Wrestling says that they're going to do something, that we follow through and deliver. And I think our track record over the past two years has been very good in that. And I think that I'm already starting to see, whereas the, the groundswell was often very negative when we were talking about stuff in the first half of 18 and really a good chunk of 2018, as a previous experience. I think that in 19, and certainly as we come here, coming out of an amazing Bound for Glory pay-per-view at a sold-out building in Chicago, and and sitting here and being so close to finally having our premiere on Access TV, I think we really are in a position where, on a substantive level, we have fixed trust with a lot of people uh, and a lot of fans. And we know that that's going to be an ever-continuing process. And we know that every day that we wake up, we need to continue to ensure that we deliver on our promises and we reward fans that invest in Impact Wrestling. Because fans invest in many ways. They invest with their money, certainly, when they buy tickets or merchandise or pay-per-views. They also invest with their time. And time is one of the most valuable things in this world because all of us have a limited amount of it. And if somebody chooses to invest time out of their life in watching and getting engaged with Impact Wrestling, we need to reward that investment. And if we continue to do that, the trust level will grow and the circle of trust will expand. So it sounds almost kind of cheesy to say, but it's really, that's how simple it is. If we wake up and can keep, continue to put out a good product that respects fans, that uh, engages and entertains fans, and we deliver on our promises, we'll continue to grow. But I think we've passed the point where we start trying to worry about what we have to do to show that we're going to deliver, because we've delivered consistency for two years. And myself and Don, see, we knew that it was a change day the second that Anthem Sports and Entertainment came in and took over Impact Wrestling, because being Canadian, we know the track record and uh, the morals of Anthem Sports and Entertainment. So we knew that to be the case. We then had to spend a considerable amount of time and effort showing wrestling fans, impact wrestling fans, that impact wrestling now, just like Anthem Sports, was going to echo those types of morals and that type of consistent performance and dedication to delivering on uh, any type of investment that a fan uh, makes into the product. Great stuff. Great stuff. And and real quick, uh, Ty, very proud of what you've been doing uh, over these past couple of years here. And and I'm excited about the possibility of seeing some kind of cross promotion with with WoW superheroes, because some of those ladies over there, there were some great matchups for you there. So just want to leave it at that. Uh, Thanks for the opportunity, everybody. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Duke. All right. Our next question is going to come from Jim Barcelona. Jim, are you there? Yeah, thank you. Go ahead with your question, Jim. Scott, I'm curious about Impact going to Tuesday night and your thoughts of that night with so much wrestling on TV these days and what it means to have this on Access TV that night. I think that Tuesday night is a great night for pro wrestling and the fact that Impact Wrestling is on Tuesday nights now on Access TV. I think it's a fantastic uh, opportunity for us, and it puts us in a perfect spot in the schedule. So it's an unbelievable time in professional wrestling where there's so much uh, great product out there and fans have so many choices. And we have a situation now on Tuesday nights where there had been kind of an opening up of the broadcast schedule for wrestling on Tuesdays, and we're happy to be in there. Returning to prime time was obviously important to us. Getting on a bigger platform was obviously important uh, for us. And having an engaged uh, partner network that uh, was both large enough in scope and dedicated enough in its commitment 
to really put impact out of the forefront was important to us. And I think with Access TV, clearly, we've achieved all those goals. And also a follow up, Scott, what does it mean to, because you mentioned Access TV and obviously Anthem, what does it mean to the wrestlers that are there now in Impact and that might come over in the future to have this combination in place between Anthem and Access and how important that is to the company? Well, I think one of the things is, if you look at some of the trials and tribulations of, of previous regimes, a lot of it dealt with the domestic broadcast partner. And what Anthem Sports has certainly done is made a commitment, uh, not just for impact, but for itself. Anthem is out there and is, it is in the, the media business. But acquiring Access TV, a controlling interest in Access TV, what it means specifically to impact wrestling fans is you now know where impact wrestling's home is. There's no question about the commitment of the network to impact wrestling because we have we have very similar ownership so we have a steady home that's committed to being a great partner for impact wrestling so i think to go back to one of the previous questions this certainly is another reason another example of how wrestling fans know that they can trust impact wrestling when it pro when it makes a promise that it's going to deliver you now know where you're going to find us. You know where you're going to find us today, tomorrow, and for the very long foreseeable future. We have a home and a partner in Access TV, an amazing network that has a track record of doing an excellent job of promoting and showcasing professional wrestling. So I think that it's a, a huge move. I think that it uh, shows the type of vision that, that went after and after sports and entertainment has. And I think it was a joyous day for all wrestling fans. To, to know that uh, Anthem Sports uh, had access to TV and that Impact Wrestling was going to be a big part of that. Thank you, Scott. All right, Jim, thank you. All right, our next question here is going to come from James Walsh. James, are you there? We can. Go ahead with your question. Yeah. Well, I think that there's certainly a ton of wrestling content out there, both broadcast-wise and through other delivery and digital delivery methods. There's a ton of great wrestling out there, which I think is great for wrestling fans. There certainly is a, a wide array of choices that wrestling fans can make. And while, you know, the other companies are competition in many ways, that, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're, they're the enemy. In order for us to succeed, they don't have to fail. Like I, 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 I grew, I grew up my, my formative years in the construction industry, and other construction companies that competed with the more construction were our competition, but they weren't our enemy. So we're not going to look, and that's been my approach in business. And Impact Wrestling isn't going to look at everybody as an enemy. Competition is great. Competition breeds innovation, which is good for everybody. So I think that it's good that there's a lot of competition out there. And to answer, answer the second part of your question, I think what we need to do is we need to answer the challenge and continue to go out there. Did we lose somebody there? Yeah. Well, why don't we um, go on to your next question then? Oh, right on.
Absolutely. Uh, that that's the be- the best I have felt during the match and after match since um before rebellion. Um I uh I left on a high, I thought the match was great, I also came out with the win, I got to celebrate with my wife in the middle of the ring. Um, no issues, especially with some of the crazy stuff that happened to me during the match. Um, you know, right afterwards, uh, backstage, I, besides my lip being split in half, nothing else bothered me. So physically, I feel I feel great, and yeah, I'm, I'm absolutely ready and willing to to get in there with anyone and everyone, and uh, like you said, make up for some lost time. <laughs> Thank you. I'm, I mean, obviously it's, um, it's amazing because, you know, I've always looked up to all the knockouts who have come before me and there have been some phenomenal women as part of this roster. And those are the people that I feel elevated women's wrestling, you know, when people really didn't believe that we could have full length matches and have real characters and, you know, dimension and everything. So it's unbelievable to me, but also believable because I've worked extremely hard to get to where I am. Nothing has ever been given to me. And, you know, I chose a path, a path that was less traveled to get me here. But through all that, you know, obviously my work speaks for itself. And um, I'm now the longest reigning knockout champion of all time in this company. And no one can ever take that away from me. I think Scott's back. Are you there, Scott? Yeah, sorry about that, guys. I don't know. I dropped out there. So I guess to answer the second part of your question, in order to make sure that we're still relevant and competitive and successful, we need to continue to do what I think has been one of our strengths, which is to continue to go out there and and harvest young, uh, unknown talent and bring it along and develop it and to feature compelling, intriguing storylines. And I think if you look at what we've tried to do with our storytelling in Impact Wrestling over the past couple of years, we've looked to try to tell a variety of different stories and all in their unique, compelling ways. Not every storyline in Impact Wrestling starts with one wrestler attacking another wrestler, and, you know, that leads to the big grudge match. I mean, when you see things such as the Undead Realm that, uh, that we, you know, we've done, <laughs> and you take a look at uh, the types of, of uh, stuff we've done with, you know, take Ace Austin. He was a young guy who, you know, was a good young wrestler that, you know, was out there in the independent scene, but was lacked personality. But we developed a persona and a, and a look and a character for him and put him in a situation where he's now in a personal vendetta with Eddie Edwards. So as long as we continue to feature amazing uh, talent and we put, and tell, put the talent in great spots and tell engaging and intriguing storylines, then I think that's really something that can set us apart from a lot of the other uh, products that are out there. We really do, don't just focus on the in-ring talent, we focus a lot on the storytelling and the emotion of the journey. All right, thanks, Scott. All right, so our next question, we're gonna move on to Bill Bodkin. Bill, are you there? Yes, can you guys hear me? Yes, we can, go ahead with your question. Okay, uh, my first question will be for Scott. Uh, Scott, with the move to Access, first off, congratulations. Um, how does this change the, um, or is was there no change to Impact's plans for the future for expansion? I know you guys have the, you know, I'm talking from expansion of production in terms of the live show, bigger venues, maybe more dates. Um, is there any plans with that now that you're on a much larger platform than Pursuit? I mean, I guess first, thank you it is an exciting, uh, you know, acquisition and move for us. And I would say that one of the, one of the dilemmas that I think faced us in the, in the pursuit era, we'll call it, was we always went back and forth is do we, do we, do we you know, back off the gas pedal a little bit, kind of coast until we get to where we knew we were going to be? Because we knew this is where we were going to be when we left Pop TV. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, we knew it was going to be a bit of a process to get there. 
And one of the decisions we made was, in light of the fact of some of the history of the company and some of the times that it has let fans down, we, we always felt that we needed to go out there and put on the best possible products, no matter what, no matter who our domestic partner was, both because our domestic fans that have stuck with us deserve a great product, and also because we're not just a domestic uh, product. We are, we are seen around the world, and we needed to be fair to our international partners and our fan base uh, all over the world. So we've done our darndest on pursuit to go out there and put out a great product. Um, one of the things we have done is try to choose vet venues wisely because we've seen in the past where you can put a decent amount of people in a building, but if, if you put them in a building that's sized accordingly for them, they're great. You put them in a building where it's, it's five times as many empty seats as there is fans, well, then it gives you that hollow and, and unengaging atmosphere. So I think Bound for Glory this past Sunday was a great example of where we'll look to calculatedly and, and, you know, with great caution and care, move to larger facilities. We moved to, the, you know, the Odium is the largest facility that Impact Wrestling has ran in many years. And to go in there and to sell that out in advance was an, was an amazing accomplishment that we're all very proud of. We'll continue to make those type of calculated uh, decisions as far as for venues. We'll continue to always look for ways to, to improve both the product and the delivery production wise of the product. You'll see some extra bells and whistles added uh, to the product on access. We're not going to sit there and go crazy because we don't think bells and whistles are what's going to get it done, guys. There's already one company out there that does bells and whistles better than anybody in, in the game. You know, what we do, which respectfully sometimes they lack, is a consistent vision and product that delivers on its promises and engages fans. That's what's going to drive us to success. So that's what we'll continue to focus on. Excellent. And uh, my follow-up would be to both uh, Taya and Brian. Um, this was Taya, this was touched on for you already, but um, for both of you, for an American company, uh, this is both, I correct me if I'm wrong, the first major American company to put their respective world titles on both Brian and Taya. How does it feel to be... Um, after all these years you guys have been doing this for a company to say you're going to be the face of the women's division you're going to be the face of the men's division you're going to lead this company and we're giving you the ball how does it talk about the emotion you feel when a company comes to you and and puts that title on you and, and gives you that confidence i mean obviously it feels pretty darn good <laughs> no it's it's just like i said it's added pressure obviously but i'm just you know, I'm always very thankful to people, you know, everyone behind the scenes, Scott, and everyone at Impact who believed in me and saw something in me and allowed me to, to go with my crazy ideas and, and become the Taya that you guys are now seeing and the Taya that's now the longest reigning knockout champion of all time. Didn't come without a lot of hard work and failing and falling down and getting back up, but um, it's pretty incredible now, especially with us doing this move to Access TV to be representing a women's roster that for many, 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 many years has been called the best women's roster in professional wrestling. So I am extremely proud of my position and uh, I will continue to represent this company and these women to the best of my ability. Uh, yeah, you know, you said the first put the world title on me. They're actually the first company to put a title on me, period. I mean, that's a major national uh, company. And when I won the X uh, division title, I, uh, I mean, I long post about that and how great it was. And, you know, that's, that's like one of the most real moments you can have in wrestling and how great that felt to have uh, that sense of accomplishment and also the, the sense of, you know, trust, if you will, behind a, a company to put the title on you and then to go on and be the world champion when the whole time during the whole program with, uh, with his husband, John, um, you know, I said I, I'd never won the big one, I've never been the guy. And a lot of people always ask me, you know, why, why, why? I'm like, well, I, I don't have that answer. I don't know. A lot of times I haven't even got the opportunity to be the guy. So to finally get that, and I feel like it was long overdue, uh, it's tremendous. And, uh, and it's, you know, just my luck. I got hurt and couldn't really uh, have the rain that I've wanted to have so, uh, throughout this time. But, you know, Impact's been, been wonderful with that and has uh, worked it around me. They could have easily just taken the title off me and, and you know, give it to somebody else and say, hey, sorry about your luck. But uh, that's not what happened. So I, I really appreciate that a lot. And uh, it means a lot to me to be able to still represent the company as a world champion and uh, 
you know, get through Bound for Glory and deliver a killer main event and keep on on. Thank you, guys. All right, thanks, Bill. All right, our next question is going to come from Daniel Wood. Daniel, are you there? I'm yeah, here. Yeah. Fantastic. Go ahead with your question. Um, first of all, this one, I guess, would be for Scott. Um, the announcement of where to watch Impact on Access uh, going forward in the UK was made recently, uh, which is very exciting. Uh, I wanted to ask kind of a fairly straightforward question of, are there any plans for Impact Wrestling to come over to the UK and do some shows or you know, kind of cross over with another promotion or anything like that in the UK? Yeah, thank you. Uh, the UK has always been a, you know, a, a very strong and very uh, important and, and really vital market for, for Impact Wrestling. And it, it's certainly high on our list of, of markets to, to get to. And it's one of those things that we've looked at since, since day one when we took over in January of 2018. And it's, uh, it's something that, uh, you know, we realize that our, that our large and very passionate uh, UK fan base is uh, is really chomping at the bit to be able to see and support Impact Wrestling live, and uh, we're working very hard right now and have had some discussions. To fingers crossed, uh, it's it's a goal to get Impact Wrestling back into the into the UK market from a live event perspective in 2020. Well, thank you very much. Uh, and then uh, my next question uh, is to Brian and Tyre. Um, Obviously, a lot of people have come and gone uh, in the Impact Wrestling roster while you guys have been in Impact, but who do you think right now um, could be the future of the company? Obviously, you guys are the champions at the moment. Uh, but who do you think going forward are the people to look out for in the locker room? Um, well, the future, you know, the future is uh, now, okay? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, I mean, of course. Go ahead, Go ahead. As far as the women are concerned, I mean, we're seeing so many people evolve and change and um, really grow as performers, especially over the last few months, I would say. I think one of the main people that I've noticed is Kira Hogan has really improved and brought this new attitude and confidence um, that we haven't really seen from her before. But I mean, everybody... Every woman and every man on our roster, I feel, is con constantly evolving and changing and could, could potentially step into that position as being, quote, unquote, the future. <laughs> but um, I'm just looking forward to, you know, everybody just growing as a whole, and um, we'll see what the future holds, really. Uh, I, I'm going to second what Ty said, too. I mean, especially with, with Kira Hogan. She's, she's always been one of my favorites. I think she's developed and has uh, – enhanced her, her, her talent and her performance tremendously. Um, you know, Scott mentioned earlier about Ace Austin, uh, how well he's, he's progressed throughout his short time in Impact Wrestling, and he just became an exhibition champion. Um, one, of, uh, one of my personal favorites, which I'm so glad is a part of the team, and would love to see him break out even more, just because I, I still feel like many haven't got to see how great he is, is, is Willie Mack. I think Willie Mack is just absolutely phenomenal. I've never had a match with him where it wasn't like match of the night. The guy's just Kills it, and uh, I would like to see him uh, really, really grow. And I think he could really take impact to some different heights that people wouldn't expect. But uh, also, as Ty said, I do think the reason why impact um, has done so well and has such good morale in the locker room isn't because no one, isn't because anyone's out there trying to be, you know, number one. I feel like as a, a team and a unit, we're all trying to make impact number one, which then in return, you know, helps us get to that spot rather than you know, looking at like, hey, what can I do just for me? It's like, hey, what, what can we all do together to, to steal the show and own the spotlight? Um, thank you very much. Yeah, that's great. I did have one more question, which was kind of more related to access, if I could ask that as well. Yeah, go ahead. Awesome. Uh, so this one would probably be more aimed at Scott. Obviously, access um, before it was purchased by uh, Anthem uh, was the home of New Japan and women's wrestling. And uh, I just wondered if you could comment on uh, how much you knew about the future of those shows going forward on Access and whether Impact would like to potentially work with those guys to stay on Access and work together and maybe have crossovers and things like that. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not directly involved in the programming of uh, Access TV. 
Um, so I'll leave that to be commented on from, from Access TV personnel on that end as far as for any relationships there. Uh, what I will comment on is on behalf of Impact Wrestling, I would certainly say if you look at it, we have during our regime certainly always said that we believe stronger together, uh, which means that multiple companies coming together and working together to put on great compelling crossover events and in any ways that we can interact with each other for the betterment of both companies. And the fans isn't just a win-win, but it's a win-win-win where both companies succeed and the fans are the ultimate winners. So certainly as a longtime uh, fan and friend of many at uh, New Japan, always open to any type of collaboration with them and certainly respect, you know, women of wrestling. They're out there and uh, a weekly episodical uh, seasoned female wrestling product, exclusively female product, and uh, we certainly uh, applaud them on that. And our, we feel our knockouts are the absolute best female performers and in many ways the best performers, period, in this industry. And we welcome any collaboration uh, with, uh, with other great organizations, whether they're featuring, featuring male or female competitors. If there's compelling stories to be told and there's good business to be done that, that rewards the, the companies and the fans, we're, we're open to New Japan WOW and anybody else that wants to come forward and looking, look at working together with us. Our track record is very strong on that, uh, whether it's our amazing partnership with uh, AAA Lucha Libre in Mexico or whether it's right down to our smaller uh, developmental uh, partnerships with uh, companies like Ohio Valley Wrestling and you know, Pro Wrestling Revolver. We look to work with others in the industry, big and small, if it makes sense. And, you know, No Japan Pro Wrestling and WOW are certainly no different than that. Uh, they, they know how to get a hold of us, and we're open. And same to be said, if we have something that, that we come across, we'd be happy to reach out, have, uh, have relations with both companies, and, it makes sense for all of us. Let's do it. Um, yeah, thank you very much, Scott. Uh, that's all of my questions. Thanks for taking the time out to speak to us, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks. Daniel. All right, we've got time here just for two more questions. So we're going to go over to uh, Nathan Craver. Nathan, are you there? I am. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. Go ahead with your question. Okay, so my first question is um, really for anybody, but probably most likely Scott. And uh, the question was, in the last uh, two years, you all have sort of pushed the envelope with some of your stories with uh, edgier pro type storylines and things like that. Do you see any restrictions as you move to Access uh, TV in terms of those types of storylines where you have to pull back? Or do you think a TV 14 or whatever rating would be appropriate for you guys? We certainly consider ourselves TV 14. We uh... We, we try to be cognizant, obviously, of the vast range of age for viewers, but we are TV 14 viewing. Uh, and we, we, of course, will stick within the guidelines that are specified for TV 14, and we'll always try to stay within the confines of what's considered good taste entertainment. But as you've seen in the past, uh, you know, we think we've done it with some success. We will continue to push beyond some of those artificial barriers that have been imposed on wrestling products uh, in the past. So if there's a, if there's a good compelling storyline and we can get a little edgy with it and have a little fun, um, you know, that's something that we think our fans will be into and it doesn't violate any of our standards and practices. And then you're going to see us just push that envelope ever so slightly. And then um, I do have one follow-up, if that's okay. Um, and it's either for uh, Scott or Taya. Um, with such a, a focus on the women's division in Impact Wrestling, and obviously we've heard several questions and uh, several comments about how it's considered one of the best in wrestling, is there any consideration about rebranding the knockouts division to women's division or changing up uh, what it's called uh, just based on the name and the dual meaning that it could have? I mean, I, I can well, certainly actually, answer, but I'd like Taya to take that. <laughs> Sorry, Taya. Well, I've actually been asked this a lot recently, and I mean, obviously, it just comes with the territory. And, um, you know, I personally believe that when I wanted to become a wrestler and I looked at the knockouts, I never thought of them as being 
meek or feeble or, you know, anything like that. I looked up to them because of what it represented, the name, how it was branded, how, I mean, what they were as women wrestlers. So for me, I consider being called a knockout in 2019 into 2020 as a privilege because of all the women that came before me. And I never look at it as being something demeaning or that it should be changed. Although I know that some people will disagree with me. I believe that we're special. We're as equally as strong and talented um, and creative as the men, but we're also special. And I think that us being called the knockouts keeps us that way. And I'm very proud to represent all the years that came, you know, all the women that came before me and all the years of hard work that they did to get us to this point. We are an evolution of what they did. Um, so I, I absolutely embrace the knockout uh, name. Well, great. Thank you guys. Uh, you for, if you don't mind, I actually like to throw my two cents in there too, just as a fan as well. Um, especially when other companies were just, you know, when he called it the women's division, they were featuring women in the ring, but maybe a whole lot in our wrestling. And I actually felt like, you know, Impact or TNA at the time, the first one that actually had, you know, legit women's wrestling. And I thought the knockouts division naming of that was kind of like a, a way to stand out. You'd be like, no, this isn't just going to be pretty girls in a ring you know, dressed up as wrestlers, it's going to be actual girls in the ring wrestling. So uh, I do, I would rather say it the same because I don't see it being anything degrading whatsoever. And there's the history and the nostalgia behind it. But at the same time, you know, I thought it was like the best women's division when it first started. And as you, it's been said multiple times throughout this media uh, interview, it's been known as the best women's division right now too. So I think it's kind of cool and makes it uh, different and stand out and unique. And I, I mean, again, I don't see there's any reason to change it. Great. Thank you guys for the answers. Thanks, Nathan. All right, we're going to be able to actually squeeze in two more here. So let's go to Steve Bryant. Steve, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Thanks for taking my question. First, go ahead. Hey, um, first question for Scott. Uh, you guys have done a lot to in improve the, uh, um, I guess, the status of impact uh, from what it was. Um, it's got a lot of positive fan feedback lately. But maybe the one negative kind of hanging over the company still is the uh, Killer Cross situation. Has there been any movement on resolving that? Sorry, I didn't hear the question there. It completely cut out. Um, has there been any movement on resolving His the situation was, with Killer why, Cross? How come your Wikipedia said in the fifth grade you called a junkyard dog? Hello? So sorry, <laughs> if you can yeah. repeat that one more time, sir, I'm sorry. Yeah, has there been any uh, movement on resolving the situation with Killer Cross is basically my question. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, we, uh, as a rule, we don't uh, comment on contract situations publicly. Um, Kevin is a talented performer, and uh, we keep, uh, you know, happy to an open dialogue on anything. So, I mean, ultimately, I'll leave that to be resolved between parties behind closed doors, but um, you know his time here was was good. If he something can be worked out for him to return, he's a he's a great character and performer. And I have a question for Brian and Taya as well. Uh, you guys work bar wrestling regularly. Is there anyone that you see there that you think would be a great fit for Impact? Oh. <laughs> The first name, right, right when you asked that, for sure, Jake Atlas is, is phenomenal. I would love to see him there. I think, I think he was at one Vegas taping before, but he would be great to be part of uh, Impact. But, I mean, the whole bar roster is pretty pretty, uh, pretty phenomenal as a whole. And I would think as whip or women, I would say Heather Monroe, for sure. Okay, good. Thank you, guys. Great. Thanks, Steve. And our last question here is going to come from Najir Chambers. Najir, are you there? Sam, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead with your question. Right on. So, Brian, uh, also really phenomenal main event um, at Bound for Glory this past week. Um, a lot of social media was really buzzing about your entrance, um, uh, uh, your entrance attire and gear. And everyone knows that you're a really big comic book fan. And I know a lot about that character as well. But I, I, I think coming back from the injury, I, um, I think there's a, probably a bigger meaning to why you select that iteration of Wolverine for this big main event. I, I was wondering if you could speak a little bit about uh, the, the person who made you gear and why was this your selection? 
Um, well, you know, I, I have the machine moniker, I have the Wolverine moniker, um, and I have the entrance gear, um, like the machine one done at the beginning of the year. And I wanted to have some sort of Wolverine-esque uh, inspired one. Um, I actually uh, went through a couple different um, ideas, and I was like, you know, I should just do Weapon X thing. And a uh, guy, Liam Eason, who makes shirts, actually done the Impact Wrestling Pro and Tees. Him and I came up with the design. Um, it was, you know, it was what my entrance gear was, uh, got inspired by, which was Weapon X, but it kind of had like a own little flair to it, and he called it Weapon Cage. And, uh, and then my guy, Johnny Billson, who made the, uh, the Terminator-esque outfit that I wore earlier, and he also did um, some, some costume work for me before in this fan film for Batman and for He-Man and stuff. He does a really good job. Um, he made it for me. I actually had it done back in, like, June or so, and I just, like, I'm going to hold off until Bound for Glory. Obviously, I didn't know, you know, what uh, what, what, what would unveil everything as far as my injury and being out and, you know, the story on Sammy Callahan and yada, yada. I had no idea any of that would take place. That just all kind of happened. But, uh, but no, it was, it was pretty fitting, and uh, uh, especially as far as uh, the, the killer instinct, if you will, that Sammy put me to, and then also just being able to uh, come back and recover and be healed from an injury of uh, Wolverine. So, and I'm, I'm back 100% ready to rock and roll. Right on, right on. I appreciate <laughs> that. Um, and this is a question for uh, any of you all, as my final question is, so uh, we, we uh, in the beginning of this conference call, a lot of emphasis on intergender wrestling. Now, with how society may not really receive such, and I'm a big a big fan of the independents, um, and um, obviously both of your both of the champions have worked intergender wrestling all over the world. Um, why was this decision for Impact to really take something that's you know it could be controversial in some eyes, and you know making big moves as to move into Access TV? Why was this a risk that you know you got you was willing to take in for for uh, the talent? What backing did you guys provide to the company overhead to say like we really should do this? Scott, <laughs> did we lose Scott? Okay, sorry, guys, lose. Kind of, guys, sorry to cut out there. Um, can you repeat that? Oh, quickly, quickly, uh, Scott, um, just the, the emphasis on intergender wrestling was something that's being very controversial for some all over the world. Why was this a risk that Impact was willing to take? Um, obviously, moving to another network as well. But why was this a risk that you was willing to take? And what type of reassurance did you get from your talent and so forth, knowing uh, from obviously your champions who've worked intergender all over the world, that this was the decision that needs to go forward and Impact need to be the staple of intergender wrestling? Well, I mean, I guess first and foremost, like I said, it's, it's kind of shocking that here, you know, late into 2019 that we're, we're really talking about how it's a risk to let men and women go out there and, and perform on equal footing. We've always done that separately, but with a lot of the changes and evolutions of, of things, and as I talked about needing to evolve or to, to pay the consequences, it's something that, that, that fans have grown to, to have an interest in. And Impact Wrestling has throughout its history always went out there and tried to find uh, ways to present professional wrestling that it's not being presented on other major platforms and go out there and champion that cause. And in talking with our talent, um, overwhelmingly, talent is in support of it. Um, there's certainly some females uh, you know, some knockouts that, that prefer not to, and we, of course, respect that. But for the ones that want to take part in this, we think this is an opportunity to, again, show that we continue to break down all barriers, whether they're size barriers with the X Division, whether they're uh, gender barriers with the knockouts, we can tear those barriers down. Um, and when you look at athletes like Tessa Blanchard and Tessa Valkyrie and how do you look at an athlete like this and say that they can't compete in a pro wrestling genre environment on equal footing with the men? Like, I, I'm pretty confident that if we put Ty out there against, in a fight against the majority of the men, let's take pro wrestling aside, let's put out there in a street fight and on the road <laughs> or in a parking lot, and I think she's going to take with the majority of men because she's, she's, she's strong, she's powerful, and she's skilled. So she's skilled as a professional wrestler as well, why can't we showcase athletes like that together? So for me, as far as for the risk, I don't think it's a risk. 
I think it would be a risk to not do it. It's a risk to do a disservice to athletes that I've seen since being involved in the knockouts division from day one. I've seen athletes on the female side be marginalized strictly because of their gender. And I don't think that it's a, I don't think that it's a risk to go out there and present one strong, powerful, talented athlete against another strong, powerful, talented athlete. And to continue to have a discussion about that is something that we're going to continue to push until all of a sudden, you know, at some point, it just becomes a common understanding that that's part of pro wrestling, guys. Athletes compete against athletes and let them go out there and perform. We are not out there in a strict athletic competition, guys. I don't think I'm spilling any secrets. We're out there presenting and telling compelling stories with with characters, with, 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 with depth that connect with people. And why would we ever limit who we can interact in those stories? That's my opinion, and I think that's something that all of us at Impact Wrestling feel pretty strongly about. Absolutely. Yeah. You, there's no doubt you can hear the passion in your voice about that. All right. Thank you, Najir. And that will go ahead and wrap up our media conference call today. Thank you, everyone, so much for joining and asking all your questions. Uh, and please don't forget that Impact premieres on Access TV this Tuesday, October 29th at 8 p.m. Eastern and Pacific. Uh, if you guys have any follow-up questions, please feel free to reach out to Cindy and myself. And uh, thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thank you.